I have done some extensive testing in GPT-4 to try to approach human-like level story writing. This alternative The Last of Us story you will now hear has been fully written by GPT-4, it's been illustrated by Midjourney V5 and the narrator is an AI voice. After the story I will show you what prompts and personas I used and please roast the story down in the comments below so I can improve. Enjoy. Chapter 1. Whispers in the Dark The sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows over the crumbling cityscape. Nature, with her slow and relentless persistence, had begun to reclaim what was once hers. Vines snaked up the sides of abandoned buildings, while the once bustling streets lay buried beneath a thick carpet of moss and decaying leaves. A faint breeze whispered through the empty streets, carrying with it the faint scent of rot and despair. The silence was oppressive, broken only by the distant cries of the infected, the hollow echoes of humanity's downfall. Joel moved cautiously through the ruins, his boots crunching softly on the debris beneath his feet. His eyes scanned the surroundings, his senses honed by years of survival in this unforgiving world. He had learned the hard way that danger lurked around every corner, and trust was a luxury he could ill afford. As he entered a derelict apartment building, his fingers grazed the chipped paint of the walls, feeling the rough texture beneath his fingertips. The remnants of a life long gone lay scattered across the floor. A child's toy, a shattered picture frame, a tattered book with its pages splayed open. He paused for a moment, his eyes lingering on the faded photograph in the broken frame. A young couple smiled back at him, their eyes alight with love and hope. The memory of his own lost happiness tugged at his heart, a constant reminder of the life he once had. In the dim light, he rummaged through the debris searching for anything that might be of value in this desolate world. A rusted can opener, a frayed blanket, a dented canteen, each item a small victory in the daily struggle for survival. As he emerged from the building, he spotted a small group of survivors huddled around a flickering fire. They glanced up at him warily, their eyes clouded with suspicion. In this world, trust was a fragile thing, easily shattered by desperation and fear. He approached them slowly, his hands raised in a gesture of peace. You folks got anything to trade? He asked, his voice low and measured. A burly man with a grizzled beard eyed him for a moment before nodding. Maybe. What you got? Joel pulled out the can opener and held it up for inspection. The group exchanged glances, and the burly man motioned for him to sit. They haggled for a while, the conversation stilted and tense, each party keenly aware of the delicate balance between cooperation and betrayal. As he left the group with a few scraps of food and a battered map, he couldn't help but feel the weight of their shared burden. They were all survivors, clinging to the remnants of a world that had been torn apart by the cordyceps infection. They had all lost something, family, friends, hope, and in the process, they had lost themselves. It was in this world of darkness and despair that he first encountered Ellie. She was cornered in an alley her back pressed against the graffiti-covered wall as she faced down a group of infected. Her eyes were wide with fear, but there was a fire in them, a fierce determination that belied her youth. Joel hesitated for a moment, torn between the instinct to help and the knowledge that every stranger was a potential threat. But as he watched her fend off the infected with nothing more than a broken pipe, something inside him stirred, a long dormant spark of protectiveness that he thought he had lost forever. He charged into the fray, his fists connecting with the infected with brutal force. Together, they managed to fend off the attackers, their ragged breaths mingling in the air as they stood back to back, surveying the carnage. Thanks, Ellie muttered, her eyes still wary as she looked him up and down. I could have handled them myself, though. Joel raised an eyebrow, his gruff exterior barely masking the flicker of amusement that crossed his face. Sure you could have, kid. They stood there in the dim light, the silence between them heavy with unspoken questions. Joel knew better than to pry, but there was something about this girl that piqued his curiosity. You got a name? He asked, his voice gruff but not unkind. Ellie, she replied, her guard still up as she assessed him. And you? Joel. An uneasy truce seemed to settle between them as they walked together, the narrow streets winding like a labyrinth through the decaying city. Their conversation was sparse, each sharing only the most basic details of their lives in this shattered world. 
It was during one of these rare moments of quiet that they overheard the whispered conversation, the hushed voices carrying through the still air like ghosts of a forgotten time. I heard there's a cure, one voice murmured, the words tinged with both hope and fear. But they're keeping it hidden, using it to control us. Ellie's eyes widened at the revelation, and she locked eyes with Joel, the same question burning in both of their minds. Could it be true? What do you think? Ellie asked, her voice barely audible as they continued on their way. Could there really be a cure? Joel shrugged, his gaze distant as he considered the possibility. I don't know, kid, but if there is, we ought to find it. Ellie nodded, her determination hardening into resolve. Yeah, we will. And so, the two unlikely allies set out on their journey, driven by the faintest glimmer of hope in a world consumed by darkness. They knew the path ahead would be fraught with danger, and the truth they sought might be buried beneath layers of deception and betrayal. But as the sun dipped below the horizon and the shadows lengthened around them, they moved forward, undeterred. For they had found something precious amidst the ruins, a flicker of hope, a spark of connection, and they would fight to protect it, no matter the cost. Thus began the first chapter of their story, a tale of courage, resilience, and the unbreakable bond between two lost souls in a world gone mad. It was a story of hope in the face of despair, of light pushing back against the encroaching darkness, and the first step in unraveling the tangled web of the Cordyceps conspiracy. Okay, so that was the story. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. But now let's dive deeper into how I actually wrote this with GPT-4. So you can see we are on GPT-4 here. My main focus was to try to build the story or the book or whatever you want to call it uh, on the concept of showing, not telling, right? It's not gonna tell this is Joel, he's 40 years old, he likes to do that, he likes to do this. That was my uh, intention going in. So I just started, with, let's talk about building a storybook on the concept of showing, not telling, right? So we got some good answers back here from GPT-4. And then I moved on to great. Let's also talk about the importance of very slow development character building and not rushing the main plot, but slowly building the story arc. That was the main point I had with this, because usually GPT-4 likes to rush the stories, like it really wants to move on quickly, right? Then we get into the persona I tried to create for this. It's not so different from the other ones I've been using, so I just... Here is your new persona and role. You are a genre author. Your task is to write genre stories in a rich and intriguing language. In a very slow pace, building the story. Answer with a few acknowledge. The genre is going to be an emotional thriller. Okay, so we get our answer back. And then I filled out a story template here. Uh, you can read this if you want to. So I created a different types of plots uh, I wanted for this uh, alternative The Last of Us story. I had a poll on YouTube. Uh, most of you wanted The Cure. So that's what I tried to do. My protagonist was Joel. The other one was Ellie. The author style is rich and intriguing. It's going to be dialogue heavy. Emotional mystery thrilling and here is an important part. Uh, I really worked on this pacing. Very slow build up of the story, in-depth character development and world building. The story length, I don't know, it says full book. I couldn't really think of anything else. Emotional mystery thriller. So we built out this, this template here. Uh, I'm not going to read all this. So the Cordyceps Conspiracy is an emotional mystery thriller that invites readers to journey with Joel and Evie as they uncover the hidden truth that could change the course of humanity. So uh, I'm not going to read any more about that. Here I had to do some back and forth because build the detailed story outline for chapter 1 of 12 from the factors above. Focus on showing, not telling, and a slow arc for the book. When I tried this first, just build a story outline, it got so quick to move on. But when I changed it up to chapter 1 of 12, it really slowed down the story outline. So we got setting the stage, we got some good things here. Establishing atmosphere, introducing Joel, daily, daily life in the post, revealing Joel's past. Establishing Joe's motivation, introducing Ellie. So you can see this is quite slow. Uh, it's it's a bit sped up at the end. I couldn't really do anything about that. I guess I could have worked more on it. 
uh, but I just have to let it slide for this alternative version. Then I move on to now write chapter one like it's a full book, about 2000 words. It couldn't really reach 2000 words, it was about 1500, but that was okay. With focus on showing, not telling, and a very slow build up with character development, world building, and heavy dialogue. And that was basically it, and here you can see the story, chapter 1, Whispers in the Dark. This is exactly the story you just heard. It got, got to all the way here, then I just type continue, and it continue and finish chapter 1, right? I actually took a few things out here, I uh, did some quick editing. That is how far I have gotten so far in this story writing approach. If you have any feedback, I'll be happy to incorporate that in the next version. Uh, I thought it was interesting, it's definitely an improvement over ChatGPT. I'm kind of eager to hear what you have to say, but anyway, yeah, I think that's it. Like I said in the beginning, please leave a comment down below and say what you mean about the story so I can take that feedback and improve. If you want the prompts I use, just sign up from the newsletter down below and you will get access to a PDF with I think it's about 30, 40 prompts now. And as always, thank you for watching, have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.